Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to cover the installation process of Python NADEN. For those that are not familiar, NADEN is a great automation tool. It's similar to the other ones, Zapier and a few others. With that being said, NADEN goes a step further and it also allows you to have it a self solution so within your home lab. I have many use cases for NADEN and I'm going to continue using these uh, tutorials regarding NADEN going forward. But one thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, getting Python installed. Uh, the reason being because another video that I'm going to come out with in a week or so is going to cover how I have now decreased my recording and editing time of my videos by probably like 100% um, just using a Python library. And I'm using this automation to to um, automate that task to be even. So let's just show you how you use Python within NNN and it's not straight. So first, I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. And then we'll go over the process and get an understanding of what I'm talking about. So here in NNN, we're going to create a um, well, we'll do just a manual trigger for now. And then we're going to create a node. So here, then we'll go to the top. We're just going to search execute. So we're going to select the command node. And then we're just going to go ahead and just run a simple command in here. So essentially what you could this as is pretty much the terminal, the CLI. And you could run anything uh, like a bash, like here, echo test. In this case, we're going to make sure that Python works. So one way to do that is we could pretty much print the screen or the terminal. So we're going to specify Python 3 dash C. And then we're just going to do print uh, just like you would within like a Python script and then just do hello world. Now, if we do test step, you'll see that it didn't work. Uh, the reason being, I just port it real quick. All right. So you can see it has an exit code of zero. Obviously, anything other than zero is an exit, uh, an error. Uh, the standard error is empty because there is no error. Standard output is hello world. So now that verifies that we have Python installed on our NADN container. And we could run NADN, we can install uh, various packages. If we want to run pip, install any other package pretty much to be used within our automation. All right, so to start this process, I'm going to head over to my GitLab. And in here, we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, so as you may have seen in other videos, I started building out my documentation and references and stuff like that with GitLab. And uh, one of the things that we're going to discuss today, obviously, is going to be our um, NADN. So in this case, we're going to end up redeploying a new container. This is not going to be the container. So we need to create a Docker file, which we're going to do in a second. But the reason being is that we're going to create this Docker file and we're going to host it into our container registry within Git. Uh, you could do this a number of ways. You host it in your Docker hub, whatever other container registry that you would like to, that you have access. In this case, we're just going to use the GitLab registry because we are using container to deploy our uh, containers and that's something as well. But in this case, we have our container registry and we're going to deploy, like I said, that NADN Python container that we're going to be building out or that image. That so now if we go back into the home lab and we click on that YAML file for the NADN Python, you're going to see, sorry, let me click on the right one. So it's uh, incorrect, um, fix that, but NADN YAML, this is the one that I used to go ahead and build out my um, NADN container. Uh, some of it's still not or not correct anymore. We got rid of traffic, but that's not what I'm here to show you. I'm here to show you that now, instead of using the standard image within Docker Hub, we are now pointing to our container registry that I just talked about down here, registry.gitlab.com, the latest tag. Another way to get that. So if you go into deploy container registry, find the, the um, container that you would like to deploy, and then go ahead and just copy that link here, that image path, and then um, that file. All right, so like I said, we're going to have to build out a new Docker image, and that's going to get hosted into our container registry. The reason being because the base image of NADN does not have Python in it, so you will not be able to install any, or even pip, you can't even install any Python packages or the Python vault library. So with that, we're going to go ahead and from our base image of NADN, uh, with this tag here, so NADN 1.88.0, you see you may change or whatever you want to use up to you. In this case, for this example, what we're doing, so this is going to be the base image that we're building off of. And then we're going to go ahead and install Python. To do that, we're going to go ahead and use user root. We're going to run AP, uh, APK or um, so NADN uses Alpine. And then we're going to do add. And we're just pretty much going to add and update and install the Python 3 and pip to install Python library. Next, we're going to go ahead and declare user node. So we're not using user root. It's never a good idea to uh, be a root user. And then finally, we're just going to go ahead and do run. So the run is going to run a command. Obviously, if you were in a terminal, Python 3 dash M for module pip install. And then over here is going to be the current user. This is I'm not sure this is 100% necessary. Uh, but based on uh, several maybe discussions that I read or even AI it had talked about this saying that it pretty much just, just bypasses any errors uh, or any warnings that it might present saying that it might break something. Uh, so in this case, I just had it and it worked fine for me. So that's stuck with 
and then uh, pipx. Pipx is going to be installed, and what that does is it pretty much runs or installs these libraries in an isolated environment within our end. Last, we're going to go ahead and update our path variable, and what this does here, so environment path, define that new path variable. So here. Um, it's pretty much just setting the binaries. So it's in our path. So anything that's in slash bin, we reference it without the entire path, obviously. Um, and then it'll, it'll prepend it to the path. So I already did this process, but I'm going to walk you step by step and show you how to do it. So the first thing that, or the next thing that you want to do is, so we had created that Docker file. The next thing you want to do is Docker login. So to do that, we're going to do Docker login. Again, this is if you're using GitLab registry, if you're using something else, you might have to follow different documentation instructions, but we're going to do Docker login and we'll do registry.gitlab.com. So let me actually remove that so I could show you what it would do if it wasn't there. All right. So what I did here is I'm just going to go ahead and move that config.json file, which already stored credentials. Uh, and I'm just going to create a backup. So now that that file no longer exists, essentially this config.json. So if I run Docker login again, it's going to go through several prompts, one of them being username and a password. So in this case, we'll just go ahead and do that username, um, make one up for now, and then a password. So go ahead and do that. And then it will save it for you. And I'll just kind of go ahead and do all right, so now you would get a lot of login success. I'll just do it again just to show you when I do Docker login. Uh, I should have saved it. Oh, let me do it one more. Actually, I realized I did it backwards. All right, so as you can see, uh, it had stored it before. So authenticating with it in credentials, and that's stored in this credentials here. And it does give you that warning saying it will be stored unencrypted. So pretty much in plain text, and you can read it. Uh, so you could also do a credential helper to remove this warning. Um, but in this case, for this example, this is perfect. So we just logged into GitLab, the container registry. And what we want to do now is we want to build this Docker file, essentially, or build this image from this Docker file. And to do that, we're just going to docker build dash T. And then we're going to just specify pretty much the URL. So in my case, I already have it noted down um, to that project. And then uh, you're just going to do the period or wherever that Docker file exists. So in, in this case, since we are in that directory where the Docker file exists, we're just going to do period for current directory. Sorry, we're not in that directory. So there's an example of that. So now if we do it, we should be able to build it out. And as you can see, it went through step one, all the way through step six and with build tag. So now if we do, I think it's Docker images LS. Um, hold on. Docker image LS. Uh, these are some previous examples from different labs, but in the case, this case, uh, here is the NNN Python created three days ago. It's changed, but that is the same thing that we had just done. So once that is done, all you got to do now is go ahead and do um, Docker push. I just realized while I was doing that, that um, it was not correct when I did that. So the Docker build, this is correct. We forgot to um, essentially finish that URL. Uh, so in this case, I mean, this would be fine, uh, but it would show up in GitLab. So in this case, it uh, when we come down here, you're just going to see this right here, uh, and that will get pushed, and that won't look correct in the container registry. And I just realized that. So when I did it again, uh, this would be the correct way to do it, at least to get it to show up in GitLab uh, container registry with the um, name nnn-python2. So in this case, just run docker build-t URL, and then the name of the, and then it'll build it out. Um, if you come down here, you're going to see just built. And then all you got to do is do Docker push and then specify the, the uh, image tag default latest, push it. Then if we open up our container registry in GitLab, uh, Python 2 stored. So now if we went to here and we copied that image path, went back into our home lab, I'm not going to change it where it already works, but you went into the NADN YAML file, you would just update that image here um, and use use this as a um, to build that your, your deploy your container. Uh, what I do, though, as you may have seen in other videos, and I will be posting an update soon, but you could also go back and check them out. We are using Portainer currently to manage all of our just our, our Docker environment. This is all going to change probably over time, at least probably get more complicated. But in this case, it's pretty straightforward right now. We have two environments, one being a local one being the RPI dash test just done recently the pie hole. This is not really got it working. But inside of local, we'll have four stacks, and then that would be the NNN stack. Essentially, just would redeploy that stack using that new Docker file, or that new um, Docker Compose file. And as you can see, it's all GitLab repository, um, and we could do pull and redeploy, and we'd have everything. So now if we go back into our NNN, like I said, uh, just like I said before, an example to show that it works, if you come in here, you'll now have the ability to run Python. So in the future video that I'm going to do is we're going to use something called auto editor. So if we do install auto edit editor, uh, in this case, it was not going to work because we have to do the X. Um, it is already installed, but I was just kind of showing you that you can install any of the Python packages that you need to and then run it inside of your automation if you were on the terminal. So installed and then run our automation.